Okay, everybody, thanks for being on today. I'm really excited about giving you this uh, information from someone who just really started in real estate. And I'm gonna introduce you to Craig Coolidge. Greg, thanks for being on. Hey, thanks, Bill, I appreciate it. Pleasure's hey. on mine. Yeah, no, this is really interesting. And what's interesting, and just tell us a little bit about your background, because you really haven't been in real estate that long. No, so um, I've been in real estate for about 14 months. Um, prior to that, I actually came from uh, the health and nutrition realm. I was doing strength and conditioning. Thought that that was somewhere, you know, that I, I really kind of don't want to focus in on. Um, found out that wasn't the case. But prior to that, I was doing sales and consulting for, um, for two large Fortune 500 companies. Gosh, so let's just say that in any other type of sales, isn't there outbound calling still goes on? I mean, I know you're doing it in real estate, but before you were in it, isn't outbound calling still part of any other sales organization? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what I was doing, you know, pretty much each and every day. Uh, if not on the phones and I was out, you know, knocking on doors, walking into offices. Yeah. So just uh, in that industry, what was that like? How many calls you had to make? Um, you know, what was the routine that you had? Oh, gosh. Um, back then, I mean, it, it literally from 8 a.m., you know, 7, 8 a.m. To, to 5 p.m., you were either on the phone or you were out cold calling, walking through doors. And, you yeah, know, that was uh, back when I lived in, in Houston. So you're full suit, 100 degrees, you know, 200% <laughs> humidity. <laughs> Yeah, no, that sounds, uh, so listen, this was a vacation coming to uh, real estate and doing real estate. Now you're in, a, what brought you to Ohio? My wife's from the area. Okay. So I made, I made the mistake of bringing her down to Houston uh, in August and she said, nope. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah, so that's good. So now uh, you got into real estate and tell me how you started. How did you get into the whole aspect of, uh, of getting ramped up in real estate? Yeah, absolutely. So I always knew that I wanted to do something with real estate. Uh, my wife and I are, you know, we're always goal oriented and, and focused on you know, what our portfolio are gonna, is going to look like to, to leave a legacy for our children. So I always knew that, you know, the investing side of, of real estate was going to be in my future, but I didn't think now. Um, my wife and I were sitting there and I kind of hit a ceiling with my nutrition and strength and conditioning um, and, and really kind of what I wanted to do. And we we're talking over kind of our financial goals and she was like, well, why don't you get into real estate now? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so I um, turned to some friends that I had seen, um, you know, kind of communicating real estate stuff over uh, the internet. Um, there was this one individual who always talked about all these different training programs. Um, and, and I was always intrigued by the book she read and, and she was always sharing that with me. Coming to find out it was Keller Williams. So I reached out to uh, different Keller Williams brokerages and um, I, interviewed one team um, with with Jennifer Mertland and you know she invited me to come in and shadow around for a day see what it was like um, you know and, and listen in on calls and so I I did I spent the whole day with them I came back the next day I refused to leave <laughs> I said let's come up with something I'm I'm not liking what I'm doing I'm broke and I um, I'm just going to keep on the phone. So, um, you know, I did ISA for her and her team for um, about two months while I was uh, getting my license. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got licensed right at the end, February, beginning of March of last year. And um, just kind of started going on the meetings that I was setting myself. So, um, and then what I like to, and most people are in the same situation. You're, your back was in the, against the wall, you're broke, you said, I got to do something. But isn't it interesting that the one tool that you use is what we talk a lot, a lot about, is that you know that wherever you are landing in the United States, if you have a phone and a voice and your ears, you can make money and, and, and make some calls. So tell me how it went for you. So you started, what did you do first? So, I mean, literally the day that I showed up there, they, you know, gave me the layout and handed me a few scripts and said, you know, this is kind of what we use. Um, and I listened to a few of the agents on the team and, you know, they dialed me into the call so I could hear both sides and 
and I was like, okay, you know, it doesn't, doesn't seem too hard. And, um, she was like, well, what do you think? I was like, yeah, mind if I give it a shot? She's like, sure. Um, three calls in, I had one person hang up on me and, um, I set one appointment for her. <laughs> Um, you know, and so it really is that simple. I mean, you, you find yourself a really good mentor, you find yourself scripts, internalize those scripts, like memorize them, like your phone number, you know, so it just comes out. And once you internalize it, you get to make it your own and then it begins to sound like you. And for me, that was important because I just, I had no other option, pick up the phone and dial. So, so yeah. you've, you weren't in, you've never been to Ohio working before. So you come into a new place, which is really important. You're coming to a new city and town, your wife's family area. And now you pick up the, the phone and that's a fast way of making money. And then, so what, what kind of success have you had so far with just bringing up the, you know, making the calls? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I am uh, volume wise um, coming up, to close to about 10 million in, in closed sales now. Um, my goal for this year is 48 closed listings um, with 60 closed transactions total. So uh, the 12 others will will make up buyers. I've, um, I wanna say it was about 34, 36. I've, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now for uh, the last 13, 14 months is, is what I've closed. So what's really, what's really good, you haven't been in that long and you pick up the phone and things start happening for you. And, um, you know, people have been in the business longer and still haven't picked up the phone and start making calls. So what source were you calling first? What was some of the sources that you said, hey, man, this thing is working and I made those calls and I saw, you know, results happen. What was the source? Expired and for sale by owners. Yep. That's it. So now. You have someone that's deathly afraid of making these calls and they're out there. I know it, it's, you know, and it, you got to get over it. Why aren't you freaked out about the calls? An empty bank account and a scared <laughs> wife. Yeah. Yeah. That will do it right there. It, it's, I mean, seriously though, for me, that's, that's what it is. Um, I mean, I've, I've yet to be bitten over the phone and, um, you know, I am more afraid of an empty bank account, no food on the table, and a wife that's scared because her husband's not, you know, participating in, in the family and the financials. And, and for me, that that's big. Um, you have to find your why, and you have to realize that you're not going to die. I'm still here. Real estate hasn't lost this patient. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the person really didn't beat you up. Are you finding percentage-wise... Uh, people that are mean hanging up versus people that are not. What do you think the percentage of the, the not so great type of people to talk to on the phone versus the nice ones? What do you think that mixture is? Oh gosh. Um, some days it's 50, 50, some days it's 75, 25, you know, some days I'll get all happy people. And, you know, uh, other days it usually comes, you know, in January, February, and it's been a full moon <laughs> the night before and it's freezing outside and right. everybody's just mad. Um, but I mean, there's just a mix. You're going to come across them um, no matter whether it's on the phone or outside. All right. So how many contacts do you average in a day? Um, I, my average is probably going to be right around uh, 20 contacts a day minimum okay. all right and then out of those 20 that you make per day how many appointments are you looking to set per week um my goal that i have is two appointments that are pre-qualified set and gone on every single week that's how me and my coach and my team tracks my productivity okay okay good so so this is good so you go to two appointments and um, what is your, when you look at ratio, I don't know if you know this number, but it's very interesting. I, I, we've tracked it for many, many years. We were tracking numbers and have a general ratio. But what do you think the ratio is between contacts to your appointment set? Do you have any idea? I don't. I kind of, you know, stepped away from my, my contacts to appointments set um, because I, I found myself personally trying to just make contacts, make contacts, make contacts. And 
I'd find myself getting off the phone too fast and missing things because I wasn't listening well because I was ready to make that 25th, 26th contact that I needed for the day. So I don't personally track that anymore just because I, I felt myself not being as productive. I, I, you know, that's really important what you just said. And I like it. It doesn't work for everybody, but I think this is really important. You said, hey, I, I listen better uh, when I'm not worried about the contest because, you know, we're, we're salespeople. So we want, this is like a, uh, almost like that we want to make the most contacts because we want to win for the day and you yeah. win for the day and you get no appointments because you were just, <laughs> but you won on contact and you can't take that to the bank. No, nope. can't exactly. take that to the bank. Uh, so I like that. I, I think that's really, really good. And so um, when you're on the phone, consciously listening, what are you listening for? What, I mean, what is your technique? What are you listening for? So really kind of first and foremost, what, what I like to do is, is just make that rapport, that, that initial rapport or, or figure them out, you know, as quickly as possible. This way I can figure out how to talk to them because at the end of the day for me, it's just a conversation. I am just trying to have a conversation with someone and I want them to be at ease and as relaxed as I am mm -hmm. because I'm just here to help them. And, and so I try to let them know, like, you know, I've, I've got a problem that I need solved and, and that's kind of understand what your situation is. And once I do that, you know, I may be able to help you. And so, I mean, that's kind of what my strategy is with my conversations. It's just, you know, don't, don't treat them as anything over special that it gets in your head and you get afraid. They're just people. People, yeah. people, people. Right, right. So um, when you said rapport is important, having a good conversation and then and coming from help, which is coming from contribution or feeling that you can give mm -hmm. some, something to someone. And then um, do you have like, is it um, uh, when you're actually closing, where do you find the close? I mean, like you're in this conversation and then you know it's time to close. Where do you find that spot? And then what do you say? You know, I, I, once we've gotten past their motivation and I've figured out that, you know, there may be some ground for us to help them, you know, I, I, I let them know. I just say, hey, you know, this is my thought process. Um, I understand that you're trying to get your household. This may work or this may not. You know, let's, let's just sit down and take a look at it so we can better understand that you're in the best position when we've walked away and I give them the option. I, I'm, Hey, I have availabilities Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which day works best for you. Hmm. And you know, they'll let me know. And, and then I say, okay, I've got these times, any, which one of them better for you. And then I let them know, said, Hey, we're going to stay in a follow up here. Um, I am going to be giving you a call back. I've got a number of questions I want to go through because I really want to be prepared. So um, really that's kind of, I just look for that natural state of, you know, are we both on the same page that I have something to offer and they have something that I have. Right. And what I hear you saying is that you're not being uh, too, you're not strong arming the client or the prospect. You're not uh, slamming them very hard because the more you do that, in my opinion, from all the training that I do and you're in my class, you, you know, it's kind of, pushes people back but you said something here it may or may not be for you basically and you know what that right. i guess what you're finding is that their guard is down and you can you can close much easier when you give them a way out i think most real estate people um are getting so uh excited about the deal that they push someone to a corner and they can't get out so you got that what flight or fight syndrome going and you're giving them a way out really but not really because you, you the way out is um, you had to go down there, but you made them feel comfortable. And that seems to be working with you. And you sound like you're going really casual in your conversations. Now, when you get to the house, what happens? You have a routine there. I do. Um, so prior to me actually arriving, we do our own pre-qualification. So I have a script of um, a number of questions. I want to say it's like 15 to 20 questions. And, and what, that, what that'll look like is that kind of spills on into my conversation that I'll have with them at the house. Um, and I always give them a heads up when I set the appointment and say, hey, I am going to be giving you a call back 
I do have a number of questions to go through to make sure that I'm prepared because I don't want to waste your time. And so then we're figuring out their financials, their motivation, their timeline, really kind of, you know, how, where their head's at with the home. So once I get there, you know, I introduce myself, I, I let them know and said, hey, it's one o'clock. We had an appointment at one o'clock. I set my stuff down at the table and, and I say, you know, Mr. Or Mrs. Seller, if you don't mind, I am going to have a quick look around the house just as a buyer would. Um, and I will meet you right here back at the table. I'll go do my quick look. And if I have questions, I'll ask them that. And then we sit down and we begin our presentation. Good. So um, you, you, as you were saying that to me, I'm going, and I'm sure Greg, you do, but have you ever had a bad day? You didn't feel like prospecting at all? <laughs> Many. Like, you know, like a lot. So what do you do? How do you get yourself to a point where you know you got to make a call or you're not 100% and you got to, you know, you got to perform? What do you do? So, I mean, I'll, I'll be real and transparent. Some days, you know, I, I did not make the number of contacts that I probably should have, or I probably could have. Um, and, and, you know, we get our knees knocked out from underneath us, but the more that I've been doing this, I, I've realized that it's a mindset. Um, give yourself energy, find something that, you know, brings out that positive vibe in you, put on some good music, you know, get up, walk around. Um, and, just have fun with it. Pick up the phone. Even if you're in a bad mood, make it a goal to try to make somebody to laugh or, you know, find it like find an odd question. Um, you know, we, as, as professional as it is, we'd pull the old super troopers thing and see how many times we can squeeze in a meow in a, in a conversation when you realize that it's kind of going South. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. You know, so it, it's, it's just mindset bill. And that's been one of the biggest learning curves for me over the last 14 months is how to stay in a positive mindset, how to get my head in the game to stay focused. And I just put myself in a world that I'm blinders on and it's game time. You know, um, we talk a lot in my training and transforming, having that transformation. We were talking about it in the class that I was at and I saw you at is, you know, that, that you have to have your phone booth. It's like Clark Kent going in and putting Superman suit on, you know, yours right. is music and you've got to transform because you're not going to be this dynamic prospector all day long. You're going to, you condense it for that time, but you better be on and then whew, you take a little break. And then you mm -hmm. got to get back on again. So uh, do you find yourself having this woo really hard chart and then you get down to a lull and you got this back and forth stuff going on in your day oh bit. yeah yeah no i mean you know that's that's bound to happen and and i've realized that like if i if i've just had you know my morning's gone out the window before i even get to the office for whatever reason you know i i just i take a look at and and see like am i gonna be able to get through that hump or do i need to switch my schedule up a little bit and you know, I'll, I had some tasks set aside for the afternoon. You know what? I'm, I'm going to knock them out now. Um, and then I'm going to switch it around and, and get in that right headspace. And then throughout the day, you're, you're going to have those ups and downs, especially when you come across somebody that is just absolutely rude, you know, right. just absolutely choose you a new one. And, and you think you can outskirt them, but it's like, man, Somebody must have just run over their cat because he is not happy. Um, and it, it, it gets to you. It, it does, you know, and so you have to, all right, you know what, put it aside. Let's get on to the next one. And so you talk to yourself a lot. <laughs> I, I do. I do. Yeah. Thankfully, I wear a headset, so it looks like someone's on the other head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Because, listen, man, we're not going to, you know, it, it's a job. And I think at times, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I've been doing this for a long time, that you forget that you have a job. It's this new thing. It's a, like real estate. You went from a corporate environment, basically, to this job. This job has really no bosses, right? You don't have to show up. You don't have to do anything. You could screw up all day long and make no money, and no one really knows. So, so how do you maintain a little bit of that corporate mindset that you had before, in this world that's kind of loose, you know, how do you do that? So th that's a really good question because it, it took me a little while. Um, when I first started off um, 
as an ISA and with the original team that I was on, it was very structured. It was, you're in the office at 745. That was the expectation on the phones by eight. You know, we have breaks every 50 minutes and then, you know, conversation at 11 for, for objections, et cetera. And then when I switched teams, it was a different culture and environment and it was what worked for them. And it wasn't that rigid of structure. And I realized that main reason why a team works well for me is because it provides me a community and camaraderie and it, but if they weren't showing up till later in the morning, I realized that didn't work for me. So I had to be very clear and concise on my goals. I had to know what my goals were for the year, broke them down to every month, to the week, to the day. And I, I keep it in front of me. I keep my look at my goals and my appointments every single day. And I just have, I know that, all right, I have to set these two appointments every week. And my biggest areas of success has been in the morning first thing on the phones so you know what if if I've got a packed day and I get my two appointments by 10 a.m shut it down go to your appointments go take care of what you need to do but I just am very clear with my goals and my objective my objectives and what I am most successful in my day yeah yeah it sounds like you are you're driven, number one, uh, because not everybody does it. They're not always reviewing their goals on a regular basis. And, you know, you get sidetracked a little bit and you almost go back into that stinking thinking stuff. And then you're pulling yourself back in. And um, I think I heard right is that you're saying that, hey, you know, if I got my two appointments, uh, you know, I may maybe cut out a little bit early and do something. But you still have to. The goal is two appointments, right? Get those two mm -hmm. appointments in and we're ready to rock and roll. So. What advice can you give someone just starting out or someone who says, you know what, I want to change, man. This is sick. You know, you left a, another state. You came in here and you're not even done yet. You're, you're kind of like on this, you know, you're cruising, right? It's you're not even beginning. where you want to be yet. So what advice can you give someone that says, hey, here's how I did it. You can do it too. What, what do you say? Three things. Find yourself a mentor slash coach who is really good at what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Grab coattails. Bill, I always tell people, I, even to this day, like I still don't know what I'm doing. I've, you know, my, my success has been written on coattails. You know, you tell me to jump and I just say, all right, how high? I like that. Yeah. So find that mentor and coach. Know your scripts. People always talk about, and, and I did this too, um, that, Oh, it doesn't sound like me. It doesn't sound like me. Well, you know, the people that wrote these scripts <laughs> made a lot more money than I did. So, you know, yeah. I, I want to sound like that. And, and eventually, once you internalize them, it becomes your own. Third, know your big why. Set yourself goals and be realistic with them and be very clear and concise. To be clear is to be kind. To be unclear is to be unkind. And don't be unkind to yourself. Give yourself some grace but set your goals because that is what's going to drive you every day. Yeah. And you said something, be realistic. Cause I think at times we, we end up being salesy type of people to ourselves and we have these lofty goals and then we get all bummed out because we don't make them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so you said realistic and clear, concise, but, and that could change every year, right? Yes. Obviously. So yeah. you, 14 daggone months in the business, you're averaging what? How many transactions you're averaging closing a month now? Um, four to five. Uh, that's not too shabby. There's people that wait for a whole uh, career. So listen, man, great job, Greg. I'm really uh, uh, excited about your success. I, it was a pleasure meeting you in person. And I know we're going to hear some great things in the future from you. And you come back and say, hey, listen, you know, uh, here's the way I did 100 transactions or whatever. That'll get you excited. Anything else you want to leave? How do we, how do, if someone wants to get a hold of you and talk to you, is there like a phone number or something if they want to talk to you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, feel free to uh, reach out to me on my email. That's gcoolidge at kw.com. So that's G-C-O-O-L-I-D-G-E at kw.com. Um, or you can shoot me a call, 513-549-0747. Uh, Great. And, um, you know, I, I, 
if for those out there that are that are just starting out, just go get it. Put one foot in front of the other, and 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 don't be afraid. Have fun with it. it this is a an amazingly fun job. Yeah, and it's not like you are. Um, I mean, you start off with the with the low hanging fruit, but they're not the easiest. Fizzbells and expires, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that you know. Um, I know people are afraid of it, but I'm telling you, that will get you the quickest turnaround time and income fast, especially from a guy leaving from another city and coming here to live because his wife's giving him pressure. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but anyway, hey, listen, hey, thank you so much, guys. I hope that you enjoy it, Greg, and uh, we'll be back with some more great information. Hey, thanks so much for being on. Appreciate it, Greg. Thanks, Bill. Have a good Bye. one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.